Today's hearing will focus on an important part of the Middle East, one that probably does not receive enough attention from policymakers, and that is Yemen. Yemen is, if, if we could, I tell you what, if people that are leaving, if you would leave quietly and promptly, that'd be great. Yemen has been rocked by political turmoil since 2011 and suffered through violent civil war since 2014. Unfortunately, the war has split the country in half and left much of Yemen ungoverned. Al-Qaeda's affiliate in the region, AQAP, has used this opportunity to flourish in Yemen. The group holds significant territory and has, has a long history of planning terrorist attacks against the United States. AQAP has several times tried to take down U.S.-bound airliners and has taken credit for other large attacks. AQAP is also a significant terrorist threat to Saudi Arabia and our Gulf allies. Additionally, Iran has exploited this conflict to increase its influence in the region. They continue to provide arms to the Houthi forces despite a UN Security Council resolution prohibiting such actions. Houthis have used these weapons to attack U.S. ships off the Yemeni coast, and they are launching missiles across the border into Saudi Arabia. Unfortunately, these concerns are compounded by a tragic humanitarian crisis that is currently unfolding. An estimated 7.3 million people are in need of immediate food aid. 462,000 children suffer from acute malnutrition. And according to the UN, more than 10,000 civilians have already died in a two-year conflict. Both the Saudi-led coalition and the Houthis disagree on the fundamentals of a political settlement. However, the battle lines are beginning to harden near where Yemen has previously divided from 1918 until 1990. With the arrival of a new administration and the new reality that is emerging on the ground, it's a good time to re-examine this conflict. We must ask what more can be done to bring about a peaceful resolution and take a closer look at what possible outcomes could mean for U.S. interest in the region. I also look forward to hearing your thoughts on the ways that the U.S. could further mitigate the humanitarian crisis and combat the AQAP threat. I want to thank all of you for being here today, for coming, and thank you for sitting through our business hearing. And with that, I want to thank again. I want. I want to thank again the committee and uh, and uh, turn to our ranking member. Oh, thank you, Mr.